Welcome to this tech tip on some of the Millen enhancements at EdgeCam 2013 R1. Please note that this does not cover every enhancement and you should refer to the What's New documentation for complete information. Waveform roughing improvements add even more efficient toolpath patterning when opening the initial pocket. Users may notice even smoother transitions between sections of the shape as the material is removed. There are new options on the Approach tab that permit pilot hole locations to be specified for the initial entry and provide user control over plunge feed on approach moves. Additionally, the entry helix is slightly tapered to eliminate any possibility of tool rub while milling into the initial pocket. The Control tab also provides a new Cleanup Final Pass option. This may be desirable if you want to add a final pass to remove tool scallops, and it can now be done in the roughing cycle without needing to add a separate profiling cycle simply to skim the shape after roughing. The profiling cycle now adds radius and chamfer corner break options on the control page. This is great for situations where the designer has not added those as part of the solid design, the user can simply put them in as part of the machining intent for toolpath. Toolpath will be created to break those corners as specified without the need to go back and add additional geometry or to edit the solid design. The 5-axis milling cycle now permits geometry to be selected directly from the solid. It is no longer necessary to create the edge loop and face features typically used for geometry inputs prior to creating toolpath. It may still be desirable to create those features, but the ability to create 5-axis milling toolpath without first having to create features is a nice time-saving improvement. The new Remove Remaining Collisions option automatically eliminates any collisions that remain after the main checks have been completed. This is done by retracting the tool away from the surface. There are also new advanced options that provide a higher degree of control over the calculation of toolpath points. Surfaces with slight curvature, such as flat or slightly curved faces, generate few control points. The chaining tolerance can improve toolpath quality for these geometries. Similarly, the slow and safe path creation options sets the chaining tolerance to an interval not longer than the maximum step over distance. These new options improve toolpath quality for surfaces with slight curvature and therefore fewer control points. Other subtle enhancements offer toolpath calculation performance improvements for complex geometry and they also minimize the chance of running out of memory during a toolpath generation. The 5-axis milling cycle is now always moved into a separate process regardless of whether set safe start point has been set. Also, there's now a 64-bit version of the application that will be automatically used for workstations with suitable hardware. Many tool suppliers now provide solid models of their tools, and it's possible to now take those models and paste them from EdgeCam into Toolstore as a custom tool graphic. We've been able to do that with holders for some time, and that ability is now provided on the geometry page for the tool itself. Notice there's a new paste button added, so this means that the old CSV files as well as MEG and STL files are all permissible for tool graphics. There's also some new options that for taper mills allow a full radius ball nose mill. There's a checkbox for that, and the corner radius field has been enabled for face mill cutters, something that many users have been asking for. Other machine and enhancements that you may want to keep note of are that 4 and 5 axis indexing has now been made available on the standard mill and standard production licenses and, and higher. So basically m many many users now have access to both 4th and 5th axis positioning moves using the index command that you'll find in the move menu depending on your post processor configuration. Also, the set safe start point options that enable background processing have been added to the sequence dialog. So you can edit your sequence and directly enable that and set your positions right there without having to use the commands available in the move menu. Finally, with stock improvements, there's a new tube shape that's available for both turn and mill users. This profile shape allows voids 
and I think most significantly stock can be edited so you can take the stock shape you built and edit it and change the dimensions used to create the stock. There's some improvements to feature ordering that may seem minor on the surface but can be very helpful for tool path creation. Features are now organized first by their type and then also the level that they're on. So features that are nested deep down in a part will come down lower in the list and feature caps will be down at the bottom of the list. This improves machinability and it also improves the integration with planning board. You'll notice that planning board features are now auto sorted efficiently. Let's have a look at how these new features work. We'll start by showing the new improvements to the zoom cursor. You'll notice that as I position the mouse and roll the mouse wheel in, that EdgeCam now zooms into the cursor position. Previous versions had always zoomed to screen center, and many users wanted to have this behavior instead. Okay, so as I add it roughing, notice the waveform has the new cleanup final pass option on the control page. And on the approach page, we now have pre-drill points, as well as percentage plunge feed. Then in the machine parameters dialog, you can see the background processing tab that's been added. This allows the tool path to be regenerated in the background. I can continue to do more work. And so you'll notice that the roughing cycle now shows in yellow as it's regenerating. We can see the progress meter, but I can still do more work, including finding features. You'll notice that the feature finder dialog now has graphic images added to it, improving ease of use. You'll see more dialogs in EdgeCam have this in future versions as well. Each dialog box also has a help button in the lower right corner, as always, but now the What's New tab in the help system will list the features in the new version. It's a great way to, to get familiar with the new changes at any command. Now, as we create the features here, we're asking for the standard pockets and holes and open pockets, but it's also caps as well. And we'll notice how those are organized in the part as feature creation is done. As you look closely, you'll notice that features are organized both by the level that they're on as well as feature type, and then the caps follow separate from the others. This model organization is much easier to look at, and it's also going to be very helpful for organizing in the planning board. Now here in the planning board, we'll focus just on the profiling cycle and the new corner break options. I'm going to turn off the display of the previous roughing tool path and then have this process build tool path just for the finished profiling. Now there is a sharp corner in the part and we're going to add edge breaks onto that. Notice the new control options for brake radius and brake chamfer and we'll put in a new chamfer size as well as the angle that we want chamfer breaks to occur at. And when we look in from a top view, you'll notice the resulting tool path is modified to add the fillet break through the corner. Similarly, if we change and ask for a radius instead, the radius value will be inserted into the edge break. Pretty cool. Switching into 5-axis, I want to demonstrate some of the new 5-axis commands, particularly the direct picking capability that's now in there. So I'm going to start by copying an existing 5-axis cycle on this part and using it to machine the pocket that hasn't been milled yet. Notice the new options for advanced chaining and the slow and safe path creation, as well as the option to remove remaining collisions. Now, when we get prompted for the items to machine, I do not have any edge loop or face features in this pocket yet. So I'm going to use EdgeCam's chaining capability that was added at the previous version to chain around all the tangent edges for the drive curve of the part. And then continuing on to the prompt for the drive surfaces, again, I'm going to directly pick the faces on the part I want to use as drive surfaces. I don't have any face features created yet. And then the same thing for the check surfaces as well. So I've directly picked these off the model. And we'll create toolpath 
the resulting tool path is created and just like any other edge cam cycle when you expand it you can see the individual options the edges are displayed and retained but I didn't have to create features to build this thanks for watching we know your time is valuable and we hope you picked up some useful ideas remember access to the Vero customer portal is one of your edge cam subscription benefits also, M2 Technologies customers have a variety of ways to request technical support. Contact us with any question you have. We're looking forward to helping you continue to be productive.